Every trader needs to answer four key questions. What direction the price is trending? How far the trend is likely to go? Where can you enter a trade with the best risk to reward ratio? And most importantly, at what point you are definitely wrong? The wave principle helps to spot high probability trade opportunities, improve the trade entry with a solid money management, including stop losses and targets. Today I'm sharing several crucial tips that will definitely improve your trading, no matter if you use Elliott method or you simply decide to use price action. So if you could, like, subscribe to the channel and stick around for the full video. Nothing is more important in Elliott wave analysis than respecting the Elliott wave rules. Each wave pattern has a distinct set of rules which have to be fulfilled in order to make the pattern valid. If certain requirements are not met, some other pattern must be unfolding. Simple as that. It is therefore very useful to write down all Elliott wave rules so that you can quickly check and confirm that your wave labeling is indeed correct. Wave 2 never pulls back more than 100% of wave 1. If it does, the trend cannot be confirmed. Wave 3 cannot be the shortest of the three impulse waves. When we see a third wave that is too short, it means that it's not the correct wave count. Therefore, the next waves remain part of the third wave rather than forming waves 4 and 5. Wave 4 cannot go below the wave 1. If wave 4 breaks below the wave 1, it clearly tells us that this is not part of the fourth wave. Instead, it carries on within the wave 3. Price moves in impulsive and corrective waves. Knowing which kind of wave is likely underway currently and which type recent waves were will help you forecast what the price is likely to do next. An impulsive wave is a large price move and has associated trends. If it's an uptrend, it keeps reaching higher prices because the upward moves are larger than the downward moves that occur in between the large upward waves. Corrective waves are smaller waves that occur within a trend. For better results, you should trade in the direction of the impulse waves because the price is making the largest moves in that direction. Impulse waves provide a better chance of making a large profit than corrective waves do. You should use corrective waves to enter into a trend trade in an attempt to capture the next big impulse wave. Buy during pullbacks or corrective waves during uptrends and ride the next impulse wave as it takes the price higher. Sell during corrective waves in a downtrend to profit from the next impulse wave down. The idea of impulse and corrective waves is also used to determine when a trend is changing direction. If a market shows big moves upward with small corrective waves in between and then a much larger downward move occurs, this signifies the uptrend may be over. Since impulses occur in the trending direction, a big downward move larger than the prior corrective waves and as large as the upward impulse waves indicates that the trend is reversing. The stop loss has always been the key to trading. This is the factor which will make you lose or make money. There are two particular rules that cannot be violated within the Elliott Wave model. Wave 2 cannot retrace more than Wave 1 and Wave 4 cannot enter the price territory of Wave 1. Using these rules, Elliott method will help you placing optimal protective stops. For instance, when trading the third wave, you will know that Wave 2 cannot go below the low of Wave 1. This means that the best location to place a stop loss order will be below the low of Wave 1. Or Wave 4 cannot overlap with Wave 1. This means that when trading Wave 5, the best point to place a stop loss would be below the high of Wave 1. The process is simple. You identify a possible Elliott cycle. You immediately check the rules to be sure all conditions are met. You enter during an impulsive wave and you place your protective stops accordingly. You can eliminate much of the confusion by applying these rules and you'll also minimize your losses to a known amount. So the best trades happen if you catch an impulsive wave early on. But in order to catch those waves, 
you need to define the corrective structures accurately. According to Elliot, there are 21 corrective ABC patterns ranging from simple to complex. You don't have to memorize all 21 types of corrective ABC patterns because they are just made up of three very simple, easy to understand formations. The first one is the zigzag formation. Zigzag formations are very steep moves in price that go against the predominant trend. Wave B is typically shortest in length compared to waves A and C. These zigzag patterns can happen twice or even three times in a correction. The second one is the flat formation. Flat formations are simple sideways corrective waves. In flats, the lengths of the waves are generally equal in length, with wave B reversing the wave A move and wave C undoing the wave B move. And finally, the triangle formation. Triangle formations are corrective patterns that are bound by either converging or diverging trend lines. Triangles are made up of five waves that move against the trend in a sideways fashion. These triangles can be symmetrical, descending, ascending, or expanding. Now, a lot of the pre-trade analysis has to go into knowing what kind of corrective pattern is unfolding, so that you know when it will be complete. This will have a twofold benefit of protecting you from entering trades too early, as well as not missing the boat when price goes into an impulsive trend continuation. If you followed my channel, you must have noticed how I often use the word divergence, usually when I'm expecting a trend reversal. A divergence occurs when the price reaches a new extreme, while the line of the indicator does not. It means that despite the new high or low, the current trend is exhausted and might be about to end soon. Oscillator indicators are the best tools to spot a divergence. I personally prefer to add the stochastic or the MACD histogram when I'm counting waves. Now, the easiest point from which you start a wave count would be at a swing low or at the end of a correction. As a clue, corrections usually end in diagonals. At this point, divergences can be found on a momentum indicator, just like in this example. The application of Fibonacci ratios are an integral part of Elliott wave analysis. Combining the Elliott wave structure with Fibonacci offers high probability turning points and where the next price move will likely terminate. Therefore, counting waves and applying the appropriate Fibonacci levels is an essential step for every Elliott wave trader. Here are the common relationships between Elliott waves and Fibonacci levels. It's important to write down or print these levels so that you know how price action is most likely play out. Wave 2 is 50% or 61% of wave 1. Wave 3 is 161.8 or 261.8 of wave 1. Wave 4 is 38.2, 50% or 61% of wave 3. And wave 5 is 100% of wave 1 or 161.8 of wave 4. If you don't like using Fibonacci, you can use simple price action to trade and find projections for Elliott waves. To begin with, you can draw a channel as soon as waves 1 and 2 are finished. Connect the origin of wave 1 and the end of wave 2. Then draw a parallel line from the top of wave 1. This channel is considered as an absolute minimum target for the third wave under development. If the third wave cannot break through the upper line or fails to reach it, then the trend is weak. Furthermore, the lower trend line of the channel serves as a stop loss. When this baseline gets broken, there is a strong probability that wave 2 gets more complex. Thus, wave 3 has not begun yet. Keep in mind that wave 3 is normally the strongest wave and often will go far beyond the upper trend line. As soon as wave 3 has finished, you can draw a channel connecting the end of wave 1 and wave 3 with a trend line and drawing a parallel line 
from the end of wave 2. By doing this, you can project a target for wave 4. Keep in mind that normally, the baseline from wave 3 will be broken slightly by the price action of wave 4. If wave 4 doesn't come near the baseline at all, this is a sign of a strong trend. So, you draw a trend line from the beginning of wave 2 to the end of wave 3. Project a parallel line of the end of wave 2. You want to find out the end point of wave 4 so that you can trade the next impulse wave. As soon as wave 4 has finished, you can draw a channel connecting the end of wave 2 and wave 4 with a trend line and draw a parallel line from the end of wave 3 and project upwards to wave 5. This is your target for wave 5. And this would be for a normal wave 5. An extended wave 5 would push higher. If the price fails to hit the projected trend line to wave 5, then the market is weak and you should look for a sell-off. Most of the time, wave 3 is the strongest wave, showing a very fast acceleration relative to wave 1 and 5. If wave 3 indeed shows a nearly vertical rise or decline, then draw a trend line connecting wave 2 and 4, and draw a parallel line from wave 1. This parallel line will cut through wave 3 and will target wave 5. From my experience, this is a very valuable channel. Liquid markets are by definition traded by a large crowd of traders. Although it's nearly impossible to determine what a single trader will do, it's possible to estimate a statistical probability of what a large crowd of traders will do. Mass crowd psychology comes into play, the result of mass human emotion, as it swings from fear to hope to greed and back again. Liquidity is essential for consistent Elliott wave behavior. Stocks such as those on the S&P or Nasdaq and currencies, for example, show strong and dependable Elliott wave patterns. These markets are driven by mass psychology or human emotion. They are truly liquid, driven by supply and demand. Conversely, thinly traded markets don't show consistent Elliott behavior. This is also the reason why markets that are manipulated by a few large traders, institutions or governments are often poor candidates for Elliott analysis. So be careful on which markets you decide to apply your Elliott wave analysis. If you found value and learned something new, leave us a like. This way we'll know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.